So today we talk about logarithms finally. Okay, logarithms. And so in part A it says we need to be sure that we're comfortable converting between logarithmic and exponential forms of equations. And before we actually get into the conversions of the equations, they talk here about a logarithm and how the argument of the logarithm, the x, has to always be positive and the base, both of those must always be positive values. So the x must be positive and the b must be positive. And we've already talked a little bit about how to convert. So if you have y equaling log base b of x, then the way to rewrite this is b to the power of y equals x. It's kind of a little circle thing here. So b to the power of y would equal x. So we've already talked a little bit about this conversion, and we're going to do a lot of practice with this as we go into part one. So part one, you know that you're given, you are given logarithmic equations. They all have a log in them. So we want to rewrite them as exponential. We want to convert them to exponential. So the first one, the pattern is 4 to the power of 2 would equal 16. That's your exponential equation equivalent to the given logarithmic equation. Part B, 5 to the power of negative 1 would equal 0.2. That is the exponential equation equivalent to the given logarithmic equation. So in part C, what would be my exponential equation? A to the power of zero equals one. A to the power of zero equals one. Okay, so given logarithmic, rewriting it as an equivalent exponential equation. In part D, what would that be? There you go. There's your conversion. Given logarithmic, rewrite it as exponential. Okay, so the next set is going to be given exponential. These are all exponential equations, A, B, and C. There's no logarithm in there. Given exponential equation, rewrite it as a logarithm. So this would be log base 2 of 16 equals 4. Because 2 to the 4th power would equal 16. Okay, this next one, log base 27 of 3 would equal 1 third because 27 to the 1 third power, which is the cube root of 27, would equal 3. And another logarithm, log base 1 fourth of 16 would equal negative 2 because 1 fourth to the negative 2 power is 4 squared, which would be 16. So given exponential, given exponential equations, we can rewrite them as logarithmic equations. And so we go back and forth quite a bit. You want to be very comfortable doing these conversions. Okay, so now it says evaluate. When it says evaluate, you're supposed to have an answer that is a number. Okay, so when it says evaluate, your answer is a number. All right, so evaluate. And then they show me something pretty cool here. If a to the x equals a to the y, then x equals y. All right, so that means if you have something like, oh, how do I put this? If you don't know how to write something like this, just make it up. Um, yeah, I can't do it. I can't make up. Well, I'll just do an example. <laughs> we'll just do an example. So it says, what does log base 12 of 144, what does this equal? It equals a number. What is that number? So I don't know, let's just let that equal x, and then we'll solve for x. Let's just let it equal x, and we'll solve for x. Okay, so I'm going to convert this logarithm, because I don't have any clue what to do with the logarithm, because we haven't even talked about them. I'm going to convert it to exponential. So this would be 12 to the x power equals 1 44. Okay, well, 12 to the x power, 1 44 is 12 squared. So now, if the bases are the same, you set the exponents equal, which is what that little property, that rule above was saying. So if the bases are the same, you can set the exponents equal. So what does log base 12 of 144 equal when you evaluate it? <coughs> it equals 2. That's the answer. So we were given logarithmic, we really didn't know what to do with it, so we converted it to, to an exponential equation, and then we were able to come up with an answer. 
Okay, here's another evaluate. This equals some number. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and instead of have a question mark, I'm going to let it equal x. Okay, so now I'm going to convert it to exponential form. So this would be 64 to the x power would equal 8. Well, I want both bases to be 8 because if the bases are the same, I can set the exponents equal. Okay, well, 64 is 8 squared. So this is 8 squared to the x power equaling 8. Or 8 to the power of 2x equals 8. Well, 8 is to the first power. So once again, the rule is if the bases are the same, you can set the exponents equal. So you come up with a value of 1 half. So up here, my question mark, I don't have to have a question mark there. I know what the answer is now. My answer is that it equals 1 half. Okay, my third example. All right, this equals some value, some number. When I evaluate, my answer should be some number. So I'm going to convert it. Let's go ahead and let it equal x, just so I can, you know, my algebra is a little easier to see. So there is my logarithm, and I'm going ahead and let the question mark be x. Okay, so then this is 3 to the x equaling 1 over 27. Well, I need both sides to be 3 to a power so I can apply that rule, which means I set the exponents equal. Well, fortunately for me, I know that 27 is 1 over 3 cubed. 27 is 3 cubed. All right, so this is now 3 to the x, and this is 3 to the negative 3 when I pull it up out of the denominator of the fraction. So then I know what my value is. It is negative 3, because once the bases are the same, you set the exponents equal. So evaluating, it doesn't eat a question mark. It equals a negative 3. So they gave me logarithms, and I'm not real good at logarithms here this early in the game. So I'm going to convert this sucker to exponential because I know how to play with exponents. Okay, so common and natural logarithms. When you write a logarithm and you don't put a base, it, the base is assumed then to always be 10. Oh, crud, I wanted that to be yellow because that orange is kind of, it's much too dark. Let me try this again. A base of 10. So if it's a base of 10, they call it a common logarithm. So it's always assumed to be 10 unless you put a different number there. And it's always called a common logarithm if the base is 10. If the base is e, then that's called a natural logarithm or the ln of x. Okay, so just to kind of get your terminology in there. Okay, so now it says evaluate again. So remember when it says evaluate, that means you should have a number answer. So log of 100 equals some number. And I need to come up with that number. Well, if they don't give me a base, remember then it's a common logarithm, which means this is assumed a base of 10. So this is log base 10 of 100 equaling, I don't know, x. All right, so now I'm going to convert this to an exponential equation. So this would be 10 to the power of x equals 100. So I'm going to revert back to the skill which I just learned, which is get the bases the same on each side of this equation. And 100 is 10 squared. So that then you can come up with that value for x, which is just 2. So log of 100, remember, is an assumed base of 10. And the answer is it equals 2. All right, let's try the next one. Okay, this equals some number because they're telling me to evaluate. Well, I know that the base is assumed to be 10 if I don't write one or they don't give me one. It's considered a common logarithm with a base of 10. So now I convert this to exponential. An exponential equivalent equation is 10 to the x equals 0 .0001. I want both sides of this equation to be 10 to a power. Well, the left side is given. The right side is going to be 10 to the negative 4 because the decimal has moved four places to the left. So now I know the result. x is negative 4 because once the bases are the same, they both have a base of 10, 
I can set the exponents equal to each other. So now I know what log of point zero, 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 0.0001 is. It equals negative 4. Okay, here comes the natural log. Remember, the natural log always has a base of E, assumed a base of E. So let this equal question mark. Stay with the pattern here. All right, so this would be rewritten as natural log base E of E to the negative 3 equals, I don't know, X. Remember, the natural log has an assumed base of E, whereas the logarithm has assumed base of 10. Now, just as with the prior examples, I'm going to convert this to an exponential equation. So e to the x will equal e to the negative 3. Once the bases are the same, whether the bases are 10s or the bases are e's, I can set the exponents equal. So I have my answer. I can remove the question mark. And my answer is the natural log of e to the negative 3 is negative 3. Okay, one more down here. Evaluate means this equals some number. It's a natural logarithm, so the base is automatically e. So what this says is the natural log of e to the 10 power, which really the base is e, equals, I don't know, I'm not going to use a question mark, let's just call it x. Now I'm going to take my logarithm, which is a natural logarithm, and I'm going to convert it to an exponential equation, which would be e to the power of x equals e to the 10th. So what does x equal? 10. There you go. So your answer would be 10. So again, when they tell you to evaluate, your answer will be a number. All of those have an answer whose number is whose answer is a number. Yes? Since the natural log, and you're looking at the natural log of e, mm -hmm. could you just automatically say x equals 10 because it's equal to 10 power? Yes, you can. And we're going to have a rule that says that, a property that says that. Okay. All right, scroll down to the next page. Okay, here we go. This is the next page, isn't it? Okay, I don't want to move too far. Okay, so here it says, all of a sudden, it says here, use your calculator. Oh, boy. Okay, I don't have my calculator. Let me pull it real quick. Okay, pull up my calculator. It says, use your calculator to find the approximate value and round your answer to four decimal places, etc., etc. Okay, so to use your calculator, you just find your log button on it, and it is on top of a key, so it's really easy to find. So all you have to do is hit log, and it's going to give you a parentheses. Put your 200 in the parentheses, and then hit enter, and you've got an answer. So... This is a rounded off answer, and so I like to use the squiggle equal, which is like almost, okay, or approximately. And what did it say? Four decimal places? So 2.1234 two, decimal places. That's all there is to it. Okay, that's all there is to it. So log of point zero seven four. You just hit the log, it's gonna give you a set of parentheses, put your zero seven four in there, and you're gonna get a result negative 1.1308. Now the natural log is also on your calculator. It's on the face of a button on your TIs. And so if you take the natural log of 200, you're going to get a decimal value of, and I should have put a squiggle up here, of, and that's an awful squiggle. <laughs> Looks terrible. Let me get back on here. Okay, I'm distracted. Okay. Of, 5.2983 and then one more the natural log of 1.005 which would be approximately 0 0.00498 so I'm going to put 50. So that's real easy just throw it into the calculator. We seldom actually use decimal values when we're working with logarithms, but that's just letting you see they do exist on your calculator. It's also telling you that your calculator will only take a common logarithm or a natural logarithm. It doesn't take a log base 2 or a log base 3 or a log base 5. Okay, It only takes the log base 10 and a log base E. Okay, So now we have some cool properties here. The properties are in red. The other is explaining why. So the first property says that log base b of 1 equals 0. 
And the reason for that is if you convert it to an exponential equation, it would be b to the power of 0 equals 1. So that makes sense. So in other words, when your argument is 1, the logarithm is going to equal 0. The next one says log base b of b will equal 1. Well, that makes sense because if you convert it to an exponential equation, it would be b to the first power equals b. <coughs> so rather than memorizing these, they're just kind of logical. All right, take a look at the next one. Log base b of b to the x is x. Convert it to an exponential equation. b to the power of x would equal b to the x. Yep, that works. And the last one's kind of weird. b to the exponent of log base b of x is x. That one is a little bit tricky. Okay, that one is a little bit tricky. But if you take this b to the power of log base b of x, it would equal x. That one's usually very obvious when you see it on a piece of paper because it looks really weird. Okay, so that's usually pretty obvious. That fourth one, which looks terrible, is usually pretty visually going to work out for you. So here, simplify these expressions. So in other words, this equals a number. Well, 19 to the power of 1 will equal 19. I'm visualizing this as an exponential equation because 19 to the power of 1 equals 19. That's how I know that. Number 2, remember your base is 10 if it's not given to you. So 10 to the power of question mark equals 10. What is your question mark? 1. Remember, every natural log has a base of e. So e to the power of something equals e. What is the something? 1. Okay, so I don't memorize the properties. I just stay with the pattern. Okay, part 4. 273 to some power will equal 1. What is that power? 0. Again, I don't memorize the properties. I just keep converting them to exponential equations, and then I know the result. Okay, 1 eighth to the power of something equals 1. What is the something? 0. And here, 30 to the power of something equals 30 to the power of 10. It equals 10. Okay, really, these are applying all those properties, but it's so much easier to just use exponential equations and not memorize anything. Okay, here we go again. E is your base. E to the power of something equals E to the negative 12. So what is the answer? Negative 12. Okay, this is the weird one. <laughs> right off the bat, this one's like, what in the world is that? Well, this is a log, this little bitty log base 10. So it's 10 to the log base 10 of 14. It just equals 14. And the same thing here. If, let me get this highlighter to come up. What you're looking for is for this and the little bitty base to be the same. Okay, this and the little bitty base to be the same. And if they're the same, then the answer is the argument of the logarithm. Okay. If the two bases, the big base and the little base of the logarithm, if they're the same, then the answer is the argument of the logarithm. It's a pattern. Okay, pretty cool stuff. All right, so now what? Now we finally get into the graphing of logarithmic functions. And the way we do this is we begin with the exponential and then we reflect it to become the logarithmic. So in other words, a logarithmic equation is an in, it's inverse is an exponential. Logarithmic and exponential equations are inverses of each other. Okay, logarithmic and exponential equations are inverses of each other. So here is an example. Like suppose this said y equaling 2 to the x. Then if I reflect that line, that exponential equation, if I reflect it, I didn't do this very well. Come back. Do that worth the darn. Okay, if I reflect it over the line, y equaling x, then the, new, the red line becomes a logarithmic equation, log base 2 of x. Okay, so that's your inverse. Those are inverses of each other. y equaling 2 to the x and y equaling log base 2 to the x are inverses of each other. Now, 
The blue line has a horizontal asymptote right here of y equaling zero. That's the horizontal asymptote of the exponential equation. The logarithmic equation, when you flip it over that, at the, over that y equaling x, the logarithmic equation has a vertical asymptote. Okay, it has a vertical asymptote at x equaling zero. All right, so your, your asymptotes will also flip. So in other words, you have a horizontal asymptote on your exponential functions, and then on your logarithmic functions, you have a vertical asymptote. Okay, so be sure you get those straight. All right, that may sound bad. This is not difficult information. Okay, when I get into an example, it will make it a lot easier to work with. All right, so let's jump down here and take a look. Graph log base 3 of x, and remember to rewrite it as an exponential form, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so to start to graph this logarithmic function, I'm going to start by graphing 3 to the x, because that's real easy. And so I have a negative 1, 0, 1. 3 to the 0 is 1. 3 to the 1 is 3. 3 to the negative 1 is 1 third. And I can put a couple more values in here. 3 squared is 9. And 3 to the negative 2 is 1 ninth. So that's my exponential form. To get to my logarithmic, it's y equals log base 3 of x. And all I need to do is switch all these ordered pairs because they are inverses of each other. So this will be 1 ninth negative 2, 1 third negative 1, 1 0, 3 1, and 9 2. Those would be the points on my logarithmic graph. So let's look and see if it's graphed well. Okay, at 1 ninth negative 2, at 1 third negative 1, at 1 0, at 3 1, and at 9 2. So there it is. Okay, if you plot those points, there it is. Now remember, on your exponential equation, you started out with a horizontal asymptote. But on this logarithmic equation, you have a vertical asymptote at x equaling zero. So the y-axis is a vertical asymptote that your graph will hug or approach, but will never cross it. So to graph logarithmic, you start with exponential, which you're really good at, and just flip the order of pairs. Okay, so here comes another one. Okay, this one's a transformation, right? Right off the bat, this horizontal movement will be to the left 1, and then the plus 2 will be up 2. Okay, and logarithms have vertical asymptotes. This might seem a little overwhelming, but we'll take it step by step. So we're going to start with the exponential form, which is 2 to the x, because my base is a 2. So I'm going to start with an exponential form of 2 to the x. So 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. 2 to the power of 0 is 1. 2 to the power of 1 is 2. And 2 squared is 4. 2 to the power of negative 1 is 1 half. And 2 to the power of negative 2 is 1 fourth. Okay, my logarithm y equaling log base 2 of x before any transformations will be to just flip all of these ordered pairs because these are inverses of each other. So this will be 1 fourth, negative 2, 1 half, negative 1, 1, 0, 2, 1, and 4, 2. And we know this has a vertical asymptote of x equaling 0, which is the y-axis. <coughs> okay, we're going to do both transformations in one table. 
So we know we need to go left one. So if I'm going to go left one, my x values, left one, my x values, I must subtract one from every x value if I'm going left one. So one fourth minus one is a negative three fourths, right? One half minus one is a negative one half. One minus one is zero. Two minus one is one. And four minus one is three. So when I go left, my x values will be decreasing by one. So each x value, I will have to subtract one from it. Now, I said I was going to have to go up to, so my y values going up to, my y values will be to add to. If I'm going up to, I add to to my y values. So I add two to every y value. Okay, negative two plus two is zero. Negative one plus two is one. Zero plus two is two. One plus two is three. And two plus two is four. So that's left and up left one up two all right now if I have a logarithmic function that looks something like this right if I have a logarithmic function that looks like that and it's got a vertical asymptote if I shift it left the vertical asymptote will go left with it so when I went left one my vertical asymptote is going left one also and becoming x equaling negative one Okay, so my vertical asymptote is shifting to the left one also. All right, so now let's plot these points. A negative three-fourths, zero, about right here. A negative one-half, one, right here. Zero, two, one, three, and three, four, and that should be enough for us to be able to graph our logarithmic function shifted to the left one and up two units. I got that. Okay, very good. So that graph is the graph of y equaling log base 2 of x plus 1 in parentheses plus 2. This is the graph of that function. Left 1, up 2. Okay, now what do we have left? Let's see what's going on here on the next page. There we go. Here's another one. This one is a log base 4. So when I get ready to graph this, a log base 4, I'm going to start by creating a table for 4 to the x. Then when I flip the ordered pairs, that will be log base 4 of x. And after I get that table, then I know I will need to go right to and up 3. That will be my transformation. Once I finally get to the logarithm, I know I need to transform it by going right to and up three. Okay, here we go. Let's go back to my four to the x. Let's have a zero, a negative one, and a one, and I guess a two and a negative two. All right, four to the zero is one, four to the one is four, and four squared is 16. Boy, these get big fast. 4 to the negative 1 is 1 fourth, and 4 to the negative 2 is 1 16. That's my exponential function, and exponential functions have horizontal asymptotes. So when I flip this, 
to be a logarithm, I'll be at 1 16th negative 2, 1 4th negative 1, 1 0, 4 1, and 16 2. Once I get into a logarithm, I have a vertical asymptote at the y-axis whose equation is x equaling zero. Okay, here come the transformations for my last table. I need to go right to. So if I'm going to the right to my x values, I need to add two to my x values. Okay, I add two to every x value. 1 16th plus 2 is just 2 and a 16th. 1 4th plus 2 is 2 and 1 4th. 1 plus 2 is 3. 4 plus 2 is 6. And 16 plus 2 is 18. There's my x values. Shifted to the right two units. Now I also need to go up 3. So my y values, if I'm going up 3, I need to add 3 to my y values. Okay, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 0 plus 3 is 3. 1 plus 3 is 4. And 2 plus 3 is 5. So I need to plot those points. Now, I like to have my vertical asymptote before I plot points. I was at x equaling 0, but when I went to the right two units, my vertical asymptote also goes to the right two units and becomes x equaling 2. Hmm. We better go by twos here. Let's let this be a 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Let's change that to 2, 4, 6, 8. Let's go to by 2's and let these be 10's. Okay, let's go by 2's and let these be 10's. Okay, so if I'm going by 2's, this is my vertical asymptote. There we go. Now let's try this. Okay, my first point, 2 and 1 16th, 1. Okay, so this is 2 right here. So, like right here, right, I mean, as close as I can get it to the vertical asymptote. 2 and 1 fourth, 2, still extremely close to the vertical asymptote. 3, 3, right in the middle of that square. 6, 4, 18, I'm off the chart. But this is enough that I should be able to draw my graph. There it is. It's not quite as good as it could be. It'd be prettier on a graph. <laughs> Close enough. Okay, I'm hugging the vertical asymptote. I shouldn't have bowed off of the vertical asymptote like I did. But boy, it's hard to graph it with this pen. So I should be hugging the asymptote. Going, I can't get any better. like that. That's a little bit better. <laughs> there it is. So that is the graph of the logarithmic function y equaling log base 4 of x minus 2 plus 3. There it is. Okay. Give the domain and range, write an equation of the vertical asymptote. Okay, okay. <sighs> Let's take a look at this. Log base 2 of x plus 3. Okay, so we know it's a logarithm. So if it's a logarithm, we know it looks like this, right? If it's a logarithm. So x plus 3 is going to mean left 3, right? So my vertical asymptote, 1, 2, 3, must be left 3 right here. This would have to be my vertical asymptote. So my vertical asymptote 
because I went left 3 is x equaling 3 and what does it want? Oh, it wants my domain and my range. Okay, and my domain, my x values start as far to the left as I go is 3, but I don't get to include the 3 to infinity. And my range, the lowest I go, I'm headed out there toward negative infinity. So negative infinity to the bottom and positive infinity to the top. So this is leveling off, but it will always continue to increase. It will never be perfectly horizontal. All right, okay, number two. This is log base two of x, which my, has a vertical asymptote of the y-axis and looks just like this, okay? But if I put a negative in front of it, what does that do to it? Reflex it over which axis? Reflex it over the x-axis. Bless you. So if I take my line my sketch there, right, and I reflect it over the x-axis, this part would be down here and this would go up like this. So that would be its graph. So they do have my dashed line, which is reflected over the x-axis, my sketch. They have it graphed, so we're right on. So in this case, my vertical asymptote did not change. It is still right here. Okay, it is still the y-axis. So my vertical asymptote is still x equaling 0. My domain, my x values are never negative. They get really close to 0 to infinity. And my range is this thing goes down very low and then it also rises very high. So there's your range and your domain. Are we okay? You are very quiet today. Okay, there's that. I have to sketch it to be able to trust, I guess, or accept the graph they've given me. All right, here's another one. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to graph this one. Okay, all right, whatever. Okay, so if I were graphing it, really you would start with y equaling 2 to the x which I'm just going to go with three points, 0, negative 1, and 1. So this would be 0, 1, 1, 2, negative 1, 1 half, which is always increasing, which would look like this. 0, I could do it better, 0, negative 1, 1 half, 1, 2, 0, 1, it would look like this. Now then if I turn it into a logarithm, Then I would flip those ordered pairs and I'd have 1 half negative 1, 1 0, and 2 1. And my vertical asymptote now would be the y-axis. So it's going through the point 1 0, 1 half negative 1, and 2 1. So it looks like this. So here's my logarithm, log base 2 of x. Here it is with a vertical asymptote. So now, if I have to go right for, correct, this is right for and up to, correct? Okay, and if I go right for, and I'm not even going to do a table, if I go right for, my vertical asymptote is x equaling 4, for sure. Okay, watch this. I'm just going to move these points. If I, what am I doing right for? This x-intercept is going to go to the right. One, two, three, four, right here. This point, two, one, is going to go one, two, three, four, right here. And this point, one half negative one, one, two, three, four, here. And this will be my graph. Here's my vertical asymptote at x equaling four. And here is my line. There it is. I guess I should do it in a different color. Blue. Right here. This is the final graph. Okay, so there it is. There's my vertical asymptote. It does ask me for my domain and my range. 
Okay, what is the domain of this thing? 4 to infinity. You don't get to actually have the 4 because that's actually your asymptote. And what is your range? Negative infinity to infinity. There you go. Okay, so see all the transformations, all the movement here? Okay, now where are we headed? Is that the end? Or do we have another page? Ooh, we are so smart. <laughs> okay, y'all stayed right with me. That's great job. Guys, let me go ahead and end this recording.